All right, folks, continuing our uh, voyage in, uh, into integration techniques. Next up is trigonometric substitution. And we're going to, um, we employ this uh, technique of trigonometric substitution. We do it to end up with a trigonometric integral. And we learned in the, pro the previous section how to attack a trigonometric integral. Now, the Pythagorean identities are going to be key and helping us develop the technique known as uh, trigonometric substitution. In a typical problem involving trigonometric substitution, there are three main parts. Part one is we're going to do the trig substitution, and then that allows us you know, to attack the resulting trigonometric integral. That's part two. And then part three, uh, we use uh, right triangles to finish off the problem. Now, trig substitution, it can be used in a variety of settings, uh, but for right now, we're going to focus on uh, not exclusively, but primarily three special radicals. Here are the three special radicals. The first one is the square root of a squared minus u squared. The second one is the square root of a squared plus u squared. And the third one is the square root of u squared minus a squared. And um, well, let's check this out. Let's see how I can, let's see how we can eliminate the radical by doing a trig substitution. So I'm going to start off with uh, Roman numeral one here. So um, for Roman numeral one, if a is a positive number, and I let u equal a sine theta, where theta is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So just think theta is, you know, somewhere in quadrant 1 or quadrant 4. If I substitute a sine theta in for u, you know, we get the square root of a squared minus u squared equals the square root of a squared minus a squared sine squared theta. Now, under the radical there, while being under the radical, I could factor out an a squared. So that gives us the square root of a squared times the quantity 1 minus sine squared theta. And we know 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. So I substitute that in and I have the square root of a squared cosine squared theta. And now there's an old property of radicals that says I can rewrite that as the square root of a squared times the square root of cosine squared theta. Here, the square root of a squared would be a because we started off by saying a is a positive number. a is greater than zero. So I don't have to worry about, you know, absolute value of a. The square root of a squared is a. And the square root of cosine squared theta, that's just going to be cosine theta. I don't have to worry about absolute value of cosine theta because theta is in quadrants 1 and 4. It's either in quadrant 1 or 4. And we know cosine is positive in quadrants 1 and 4. So in short, the square root of a squared cosine squared theta immediately simplifies to a cosine theta. So we see with one little substitution, letting u equal a sine theta, we turned the radical square root a squared minus u squared. We turned that into just a cosine theta. Well, let's see how we can... Uh, Let's see how we can manipulate uh, that special radical number two, the square root of a squared plus u squared. Here, if a is a positive number and I let u equal a tangent theta, here, uh, negative pi over two is less than theta is less than pi over two. So uh, theta, you know, is either in quadrants one or four. If I substitute a tangent theta in for u in that special radical. Uh, we'd have the square root of a squared plus u squared equals the square root of a squared plus a squared tangent squared theta. 
Likewise, you know, under this radical, I'm going to factor out an a squared under the radical, and that gives me the square root of a squared times the quantity 1 plus tangent squared theta. And we know a Pythagorean identity uh, that 1 plus tangent squared theta, that's the same thing as secant squared theta. So just substituting secant squared theta in for 1 plus tangent squared. And well, the square root of a squared is a, and the square root of secant squared theta is secant theta. Again, because theta is in quadrants one or four, uh, secant must be positive. So we don't have to worry about absolute values here. It just uh, simplifies to a secant theta. So you see with the substitution here, by letting u equal a tangent theta, the square root of a squared plus u squared ends up becoming a secant theta. So at this time, you know, I'm going to head to the chalkboard uh, to write down officially the uh, trigonometric substitutions. But I thought I would, I thought, I, you know, I just wanted to run you through, uh, you know, a couple of, you know, two of the three actually on um, the motivation and the meaning behind this. So here I go off to the chalkboard. All right, folks, here are the mechanics of uh, the trigonometric substitution. I broke it into, I've broken this down into three cases. So case one is if you see in the integrand, you have a radical that looks like a uh, square root of a squared minus u squared. a is a number, u is going to be some function of x. If you let u equal a sine theta, then this radical will become a cosine theta. And then from this substitution, you can sketch the following right triangle. I mean, you know, u equals a over sine theta. Sine theta would be u over a. In a right triangle, theta sine is opposite u over a hypotenuse. And then the third, the missing side, is found by using Pythagorean theorem. What if you have a radical like number two? The square root of a squared plus u squared. Well, here you're going to let u equal a tangent theta. And when you substitute a tangent theta in for that, you end up with a secant theta. So that radical would simplify to a secant theta. And then for that substitution, this is the right triangle that would match up to it. Remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Number three that we rarely, if ever, see, I'm just putting up here for completeness sake, I you know, had some extra space on the board, is if you have the square root of u squared minus a squared. Here, if you let u equal a secant theta, and you make that substitution, the radical simplifies to plus or minus a tangent theta. So there are two possibilities here. Uh, if u is greater than a, where theta is in quadrant one, you would use the positive. If u is less than negative a, when uh, theta is out in quadrant 2, then you use the negative. And this is the right triangle that would uh, match up with, with this substitution. So these are the three scenarios. These are the three cases. And uh, let's head back to the slides and see what is next. I bet it's going to be our first example. All right, so now we've uh, written down on the board, hopefully you have it in your notes, the trigonometric substitutions. Time to do an example. We're going to evaluate the integral 1 over x squared square root 9 minus x squared dx. So uh, you know the drill. Get this written down in your notes because, uh, you know, I'm heading off to the chalkboard to do it. All right, our first example here of trigonometric substitution. We're asked to evaluate the integral 1 over x squared, square root 9 minus x squared, dx. So this look, kind of looks like that special radical number 1, uh, where remember in special radical number 1, uh, it was square root of a squared minus u squared. Well, here, I mean, I can, I can see a is, a is 3, but the substitution that I'm supposed to make, you know, according to the guidelines I just gave, is x equals 3 sine theta. And if I put 3 sine theta in there for the x and I go through the simplification, this radical will end up simplifying to a 3 cosine theta. 
before I do that, there, I have to do the following. So I'm, I'm, I, I'm making a substitution, so remember I have to take care of all parts in the original integrand when we do a substitution. So if I'm going to say x is 3 sine theta, I have to determine what dx is. Well, dx is the derivative, which is 3 cosine theta, d theta. So now when I substitute in, when I make the trigonometric substitution, I have an x squared here. x is 3 sine theta. So 3 sine theta comes in for this x, and it, it's going to get squared. Well, 3 sine theta squared is 9 sine squared theta. And we already said when the 3 sine theta gets substituted in here for x, this radical will become a 3 cosine theta. And now my dx is 3 cosine theta d theta. Now a nice thing happens. The 3 cosine thetas will cancel out. So I'm left with the integral of 1 over 9 sine squared theta d theta, which isn't too bad. I'm going to rip a 1 ninth out front. And then uh, 1 over sine squared, well, we know that is cosecant squared. That's not bad. We know what the antiderivative of cosecant squared is. We know the antiderivative of cosecant squared is negative cotangent. So we have negative one-ninth cotangent theta plus c. And we are not done because, you know, we started off with functions of x. We have to end up with functions of x. We have to go through the resubstitution. So here's what I do next. I get my right triangle. Put my theta here. I look at my substitution. x equals 3 sine theta. So that means x equals 3, x over 3 is equal to sine theta. Well, if x over 3 is equal to sine theta, here's theta. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And then this missing side right here, well, technically it's found using the Pythagorean theorem. It happens to be that special radical we've been talking about. So, once you get all three sides of the right triangle labeled, you should be able to knock this out. So let's see, we know what sine theta is, it's x over 3. Cosine theta, well, remember cosine theta in a right triangle is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is square root of 9 minus x squared over the hypotenuse, which is 3. So now we could get cotangent by doing cosine over sine. Cotangent theta is cosine over sine, which this simplifies down to square root of 9 minus x squared over x. So now that we know what cotangent theta is, we substitute it in here for cotangent, and we get negative 1 ninth times the square root of 9 minus x squared over x plus c, or, you know, this one I might just write as negative square root 9 minus x squared over 9x plus c. You know, it doesn't take much to do a little bit of multiplying there. All right, so that was your first example of a trigonometric substitution. And really, a trigonometric substitution has three parts to it. Part one is the actual trigonometric substitution, which then gives you, part two, a trigonometric integral, which we learned how to attack more involved trigonometric integrals in the prior section. And then part three 
is to use a right triangle. So there are a few, a couple here I want you to practice, see what you come up with. So in the exercises, try number 11 and number 13. So pause the video, do numbers 11 and 13. After you've done them, restart the video. I'll be here at the board working through it. All right, here number 11, you were asked to do the definite integral uh, from 1 half to square root 3 over 2 of x squared over square root 1 minus x squared dx. So hopefully you said for uh, the trig substitution that x is sine theta. And once you write down what x equals, you know, x is sine theta, you should just immediately go ahead and get dx. Because you know you're going to have to uh, do that substitution. So when I substitute in, and notice I'm going to leave off the limits of integration. This x is replaced with a sine theta, so that gives me a sine squared theta. This radical, when you make that substitution, that radical simplifies to cosine theta. And dx is cosine theta d theta. The cosine thetas cancel out, so you're integrating a sine squared theta d theta. So now you have a trigonometric integral. We know how to attack that. We attack this trigonometric integral by using a power reducing identity, specifically 1 half 1 minus cosine 2 theta d theta. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just uh, rip the 1 half out front of the integral sign. You get an antiderivative. So you have a theta, antiderivative of cosine 2 theta. Well, that's a 1 half sine 2 theta. Now I need to get rid of the thetas. I need to get back to x's. So this brings me over to the right side of the board where I make use of, this is like part 3 of a typical trig substitution problem, making use of a right triangle. So let me sketch a right triangle here. So there's theta. My trig substitution was x equals sine theta. So in a right triangle, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. This is x over 1. Uh, here we have uh, square root 1 minus x squared. And once I get all three sides of the right triangle labeled, I can, I can take care of anything that I see here. So first off, I see just a, I just see a theta. Well, if we know x equals sine theta, that tells us inverse sine of x is equal to theta. All right, so now, now we know what theta is. It's inverse sine x. We have one little minor problem here. We have a sine of 2 theta. Hmm. I'm going to have to make use of the double angle identity for sine 2 theta. Remember the double angle identity for sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. And this isn't too bad because the 1 half times the 2 cancels out. I'm starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. I know theta is inverse sine x. I know sine theta. Sine theta is x. The right triangle tells me that cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I have, let's see, sine theta, that's x, x times square root 1 minus x squared. And now I bring back my original limits of integration. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll write down one extra step and then I'll cut to the chase. So this is 1 half. Okay, so square root 3 over 2 comes in for x. So inverse sine square root 3 over 2, that's pi over 3. 
minus, well this is square root 3 over 2, square root 3 over 2 when it comes in here for x, it gets squared, so that would give you a 3 fourths, 1 minus 3 fourths is 1 fourth, Uh, let's see, inverse sine, inverse sine of one-half, that's pi over six. Uh, this is a one-half. When one-half comes in here for x and gets squared, that gives you one-fourth. One minus one-fourth is three-fourths. And if you clean all that up correctly, you should have ended up with pi over 12. All right, so that was it for number 11. Um, see, I asked you to also do number 13. So uh, I'm going to erase the board. So give me a minute, I erase the board, and I'll be right back to do number 13. All right, folks, number 13, you're asked to integrate 1 over the square root of 16 minus x squared dx. I really, really, really liked uh, number 13. And here's why. Um, you know, I have a feeling that a lot of us, um, you know, we're, in, we're into thinking, you know, trig substitution, trig substitution. And if you did that, you would have let x equal 4 sine theta, dx is 4 cosine theta, d theta. And so when you substitute in this, uh, this radical, it would become a 4 cosine theta, dx is 4 cosine theta, d theta. They cancel out, so you're left with just integrating a 1 d theta. That antiderivative is theta plus c, and I don't even need a right triangle here. You know, since x equals uh, 4 sine theta, that tells me x over 4 equals sine theta, so theta is inverse sine of x over 4 plus c. But why I really, really, really like number 13 is something that I stressed back at the very first video, the very first section for this chapter. Some of the first things I said when it comes to integration is recognition, being able to recognize stuff. And that's why I really like number 13. When I see number 13, when I see this, the first thing that pops into my head is recognition. It looks like it's going to involve an inverse sign. In fact, if I think of 16 as just being a 4 squared, I most definitely see it's nothing more than an inverse sign. And I can get the antiderivative in one step just by that recognition, something that I clamored about in the very first video for um, the first section of this chapter. And so I can immediately in one step say, haha, that is an inverse sign. It's inverse sine x over 4 plus c. And in one step, and one step I am done. So that's why I really, really, really like number 13. Let's head back to the slides and see what's next. All right, before we continue on, I want to stress one more time, uh, you know, number 13, that one that I asked you to do, um, you know, and I said at the time, I really liked 13 because you should have been able to get that literally in one step. You should recognize that as just simply being uh, inverse sine. And that brings us back to something I said at the very beginning of this chapter. Um, you know, recognition, being able to recognize, it's a really important skill for uh, integration. Let's time to do another example. Here we're going to evaluate the integral of x squared over the square root of 25 minus x squared dx. So, um, Let's head off to the chalkboard to do this example. All right, let's integrate uh, x squared over the square root of 25 minus x squared. 
Um, it's going to require a trig substitution. I look at this radical and I say, all right, I'm going to let x equal 5 sine theta. Remember, you always write down then what dx is. So it's 5 cosine theta d theta. So when you substitute in, we've got to substitute 5 sine theta for that x. That gives me a 25 sine squared theta. When 5 sine theta goes in for this x, this radical will simplify down to 5 cosine theta. And then dx is 5 cosine theta d theta. And I see those cancel out. Uh, I'll, rip the, I'll rip the 25 out front of the integral sign. And I have a trig integral sine squared theta, classic, use the power reducing identity. So uh, remember, that's a one half. This is a one half quantity, one minus cosine two theta. So I'll just rip the one half out front. One minus cosine two theta. So I get 25 halves. Antiderivative is theta minus one-half sine two theta plus c. Now I'm going to come over here to make my right triangle. Here's my theta. x equals five sine theta. So that means x over five is sine theta. Uh, opposite over hypotenuse. This side is the square root of uh, 25 minus x squared. And now I look at everything I have to take care of here. Uh, in fact, let me, let me just pull it up right here. I'm going to distribute the 25 halves also. Okay, so I just distributed the 25 halves as I pulled it up over here. All right, so theta, well, it looks like inverse sine of x over 5, that's going to be theta. And once again, I have a sine 2 theta here. Remember, sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cosine theta. Sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. So when I substitute 2 sine theta cosine theta, and for here, well, let me write that step down. Uh, that's going to give me, well, it's going to give me a 25 over 2 sine theta cosine theta. Now I should be able to finish the problem off. The right triangle. See, I know, I know uh, what theta is. I know what sine theta is. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So all I have to do is substitute in. Theta is inverse sine of x over 5. Sine theta. Sine theta is x over 5. And cosine theta is square root 25 minus x squared over 5. And you know if I want it, since I have a little bit of space left, I'm not saying you have to do this. I only uh, thought of it just now. If I multiply these three fractions together, this product of 25 will cancel with that product of 25. So I could make this x square root 25 minus x squared over 2 plus c. Yeah, I'm not going any further. I'm out of space. So there was a, another one that was a bona fide trig substitution. So I'd like you to practice practice another one. Got to get you to practice. You got to do these trig substitutions. It's like anything. Um, 
you know, you, you have to practice it to become proficient with it. So the one I'd like you to do right now in the exercises, number 23, go ahead and pause the video, do number 23. Once you're done, I'll be here at the board working through it. All right, folks, 23, you're asked to integrate uh, 1 over the quantity 25 minus x squared, that quantity raised to the 3 halves, dx. And keep in mind, there is, a, there is that special radical here. When you have an exponent of 3 halves, that really means, this really means you're taking the square root of 25 minus x squared, and you're raising that to the third power. So, hopefully you said x equals 5 sine theta dx 5 cosine theta d theta. So when you substitute it in, okay, so as I, as I just said, exponent of 3 halves, that means 25 minus x squared, it's the square root of that, the quantity squared. So we know, we know with the trig substitution, the square root of 25 minus x squared we know that that will become a 5 cosine theta. We know that. But then that's being cubed. That's being raised to the third power. So it's 5 cosine theta to the third power. Well, 5 to the third power is 125 cosine cubed theta. And then dx, well, dx is just 5 cosine theta d theta. So now we have some stuff to cancel out. The 5 cancels out with the 125 and leaves you with a 25. So I'm going to rip out front of the integral sign a 1 over 25. This cosine cancels with one of those cosines, so that leaves us with a 1 over cosine squared. You have a trigonometric integral that hopefully you said 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. Because then the, anti, the antiderivative is pretty friendly. Antiderivative of secant squared is just tangent. So you have a 1 over 25 tangent theta plus c. Make my right triangle. Let's see, from x equals 5 sine theta. We know x over 5 is sine theta. So opposite over hypotenuse, the missing side here is 25 minus x squared. So we know what sine is. From the right triangle, we get cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And once we know sine and cosine, we can say, well, tangent we could do sine over cosine, or we could say tangent is, from the right triangle, opposite over adjacent. That's not bad. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So, 1 25th tangent theta, tangent theta, x over the square root of 25 minus x squared. Or if you prefer, it doesn't take much to just write this as one fraction. And see, that was 23. That's all there is to 23. Let's head back to the slides and see what's next. All right, hopefully the example made sense and you were able to do number 23. Um, continuing. Well, we're going to do another example. Here we're going to evaluate the integral of x cubed over the square root of 1 plus x squared dx. So um, here I go off to the chalkboard to do this one. Okay, this example we're asked to evaluate the integral of x cubed over the square root of 1 plus x squared dx. All right, so this is a different looking radical here. We'd let x equal tangent theta, and dx is secant squared theta, d theta. And so when we make our trig substitution, okay, well, the numerator becomes a tangent cubed theta. 
And then when you make this trig substitution, remember that special radical, if you actually go through the substitution, it simplifies to secant theta. And dx is secant squared theta, d theta. All right, so secant theta will cancel with one of those secant thetas. So we have a tangent cubed theta, secant theta, d theta. So we have a trigonometric integral that we know how to attack. This is something from the prior section. You know, you're going to rewrite the tangent cubed as tangent squared times tangent. So tangent squared times tangent. And then thanks to a Pythagorean identity, remember the Pythagorean identity, 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. This tangent squared is secant squared theta minus 1. And I'm running out of room, so let me kind of let me kind of pull it up right to here. Um, I would let u equal secant theta because you know du is secant theta tangent theta. So that turns the integral into u squared minus 1, and then that's my du. It's looking pretty friendly. One third u cubed minus u plus c. Resubstitute my u. So I have a one third secant cubed theta minus a secant theta plus c. And now I have to resubstitute back to get rid of the thetas. So I'm going to make a triangle. So I left some spot, I left a space at the top of my board there uh, to make a right triangle. So remember we said x equals tangent theta. So in a right triangle, uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's x over 1, opposite x over adjacent 1. This side here is found by using the Pythagorean theorem, and it's square root of 1 plus x squared. From the right triangle, I immediately see cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, which means secant theta is the reciprocal of that. So now I just substitute in and I get the one-third. Uh, let's see, so that'd be a one square root of one plus x squared cubed minus the square root of one plus x squared plus C. And I'm not going to go any further on simplifying. Yeah, that's, uh, that's good enough. So yeah, I want you to practice one of these. So in the exercises, go ahead and do number 15. So pause the video, go do number 15. After you've done it, I'll be here at the board uh, working through it and hopefully you have it correct. All right, here number 15, you're asked to integrate uh, 1 over x squared, square root x squared plus 9, dx. So hopefully you start off by saying you're going to let x equal 3 tangent theta. And then you immediately wrote down what dx is. Um, 3 secant squared theta, d theta. So when you substitute in... Okay, this x is 3 tangent theta, so 3 tangent th theta squared is 9 tangent squared theta. When 3 tangent theta comes in here for x, that's a special radical. We know that simplifies to um, 3 secant theta. And then, uh, well, dx is 3 secant squared theta d theta. All right, so now we have some stuff that, uh, uh, that we'll cancel out. We'll kind of simplify. First off, the 3 will cancel with the 3. The secant will cancel with one of those secants. So we're left with a secant theta 
over a tangent squared theta. And I'm going to go ahead and rip the 1 ninth out front. Now that's secant theta over tangent squared theta. Um, I mean, that's, that's uh, uh, secant over tangent times 1 over tangent. This ends up simplifying. This ends up simplifying to a cosecant theta cotangent theta, which is a pretty friendly integral. It's a pretty friendly trigonometric integral because it's just simply negative one ninth cosecant theta plus c. That's pretty friendly. Oh, but we have to get rid of the theta. So uh, let me come over here to make my right triangle. So here's my theta. See, x equals 3 tangent theta. That tells me x over 3 is tangent theta. Uh, tangent theta is opposite over adjacent. The hypotenuse is uh, square root of x squared plus 9. So I need to know cosecant theta. So from the triangle, from the triangle I know um, I know sine of theta. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So for free I get cosecant theta is the reciprocal. So I have a negative one ninth cosecant theta. That's square root of x squared plus 9 over x plus c. Or I can quickly do this. And that was it for number 15. So hopefully you got number 15. Um, let's head back to the slides and see what we're going to end this with. All right, so hopefully you were able to get number 15. You're starting to get a little more comfortable with uh, this trigonometric uh, substitution. Our final example here is we're going to evaluate. It has three parts. The integral 1 over square root 1 minus x squared dx. Part B is the integral x over square root 1 minus x squared dx. And in part C, it's the integral of x squared over square root 1 minus x squared dx. Hey, they all look kind of similar here. The key is recognition for each part. The key is recognition. In fact, I want you to pause the video and I want you to do this example. I want you to do part A, part B, part C. And once you have completed doing this example, restart the video and I'll be at the chalkboard working through each one. All right, this final example, I asked you to do all three parts, and I definitely wanted you to recognize something here, um, you know, that we talked about. These three integrals all look very similar. In A, you're integrating a 1 over square root 1 minus x squared. In B, it's x over square root 1 minus x squared. And in C, it's x squared over square root 1 minus x squared. Recognition is the key. We're coming back to that phrase again. You should be, look, I didn't give much room for part A because it should be a one-stepper. You should recognize that this is just simply inverse sine x. One step, you are done. Now in part B, that's more than one step, but it's not that bad. I recognize this is requiring u substitution. You let u equal 1 minus x squared du is a negative 2x dx, negative 1 half du will be x dx. And so you substitute in, and yeah, I'd rip the negative 1 half out front of the integral. Um, see, that would be a 1 over the square root of u, 1 over u to the 1 half, that's u to the negative 1 half. Get my antiderivative, negative 1 half times 2u, to the one half, so I get a negative square root of one minus x squared plus c. So yeah, part b that would require just a little bit more. So now part c integrating 
the x squared over square root 1 minus x squared. Hopefully, this is all recognition again. This is a trig sub. x is sine theta. dx is cosine theta d theta. So when you substitute in, you end up with a sine squared over, well that's cosine, and dx is cosine theta, d theta. So you're integrating, you're just integrating a sine squared theta, d theta, which you know to attack that you need to use the power reducing uh, identity. So you need to turn this into uh, the sine squared into one half, one minus cosine two theta. You get your antiderivative, it's one half theta minus one half sine two theta. And make a right triangle. So let's see. I'm going to squeeze the right triangle right here. So x equals sine theta. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's x over 1. This side is square root 1 minus x squared. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's the square root of 1 minus x squared. Get a little bit more room there. Um, oh, you have a sine 2 theta there. So you need to use uh, the double angle identity that sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cosine theta. So let me put that in. 1 half times 2 sine theta cosine theta leaves me with just a sine theta cosine theta plus C. So when I substitute in uh, theta well, from x equals sine theta, I know inverse sine of x is theta. Sine theta is x. Cosine theta is square root 1 minus x squared plus c. Three very similar looking integrals. Very similar. And I wanted all three to trigger recognition. Recognize immediately that's inverse sine. Recognize a basic u sub would take care of the integral in part b. And then recognize in part c it was a trig sub. So um, that, that concludes this video. That's it for this section. You can now attack all the uh, exercises that are assigned in section 8.4. So go do them. Thanks for watching.